Unity 2019 is on its way and we can already start seeing so many rumors online like a new theme, new skin, all this kind of stuff like visual scripting whatnot and today I thought that we would check out their roadmap for 2019 which they published at Unite LA so that we can see actually what is true and what is not. And to be honest, one of my biggest personal challenges, I think, will be to say Unity 2019 instead of 18. Not that it sounds bad or anything, it sounds amazing and futuristic, but it's just so hard because I've gotten grown used to saying 2018 now. <laughs> oh, and by the way, before we forget, Happy, Happy Halloween. Halloween! So basically, I picked out some of the most interesting slides where they basically announce everything new. And I also picked some from 2018 so that we can take a look at some of the newest features and then connect them to the latest features that are going to be released. But now, let's go to Unity. Take it away, Saiku. <laughs> so to start off with, I want to recall back to one of the biggest updates to Unity thus far, which is the package manager. And the package manager in Unity enabled us all the option to both install and uninstall packages that we need and don't need. And now they're taking this one step further. So in 2019, we can expect to see an improvement to our development workflow because they're gonna be introducing support for installing packages directly from a GitHub repo. And that is massive because we as developers usually use GitHub for this kind of stuff anyway, so it's super nice to see a built-in support for that, and this should be coming up in 2019.1. And moving on to 2019.2, they're also planning to add support for package development flow for asset store publication. And finally, in 19.3, they're planning to add a project browser, which will make it easier to find packages, I would assume. And they're also improving the search and navigation system for both within the editor and in the asset store. And by the way, you can see the new editor in here, in this slide right here that they got, it looks sick. Also, they seem to be deprecating the built-in project launcher from Editor, which sounds interesting to me, to be honest, but I would only guess that they want to replace it with Unity Hub. Like, I'm not 100% sure on this one, though, so th this is not like a fact, you know? You know what I mean? Like, it's not a fact that is given by me, but that's what they want to do in 2019.1, at least. And they are going to introduce a new Unity Hub 2.0 during the same time where they introduce a new UX and UI and also a command line interface. To me, it only makes sense that they wish to replace it with Unity Hub and this just kind of like strengthens that thought because they're adding a bunch of new features, U Unity Hub 2.0, all that kind of stuff. I'm totally fine with that personally because I've already switched over to the Hub for long ago because it is just so much easier to use. But let me know in the comments if you're on Unity Hub already as well. Speaking of the Hub, this seems to be a part of it. So they're also going to work in an advanced set of templates during 2019.2 all the way through until 2019.3 and maybe even further back from that, right? So later on in the year, basically. And this will allow us to search for templates, see different categories for starter projects, and also have custom templates for our games. We'll also have an improved project list that supports searching, sorting, picking a favorite, removing and deleting projects, and so on. Furthermore, now is something people have been waiting for literally years using Unity. So in 2019.1, they will be introducing a shortcut manager for the Unity editor. And this will allow us to create shortcuts for literally any action within Unity, use modifiers and have access to an extensible API. So what is this, the access to extensible API? Basically, it will, it will be mostly useful for asset store and tool developers in their own words as well. So if you're creating an asset and want to allow the usage of shortcuts for your users, like if they click B, something happens or whatever, you can do so. And they're also allowing saving and sharing shortcut maps. So this means that if like we can save and share our shortcuts with other people. So if you have a team and your asset uses certain shortcuts, you can just share it with them instead of having them map their keys independently all the time. Oh, and we're also getting clickable stack traces in the Unity console during 2019.2. And now, to the big moment, actually just one of the biggest moments in this video because we have a few coming up, so stay tuned. But one of the biggest moments in Unity's history is the new Unity skin. 
This is what they say themselves. Build a flexible, modern style Unity editor. And that was basically a description of their mission. So the new Unity editor theme, it's planned to release in its first version. The initial version is supposed to be releasing 2019.2. And it's aimed to be a new minimal design to improve clarity, which comes with new icons and uniform style with HDPI support. The new theme uses Roboto as its font, and which is better for scaling across devices. And something we have already started seeing in 2018.3 is responsive UI. Right now, we have some tabs like the hierarchy window in Unity that highlights objects that we hover our mo mouse over. And this new theme seems to take care of that in all spots. I'm honestly very impressed with the new theme and I'm really looking forward to see how it looks when it actually kicks in and when we get to play with it. At the end of 2019, they're also planning to add support for adjustable text size and improved keyboard access that has not yet been determined when it's actually coming out. So something else I have always had difficult time understanding was Unity Tiny, or Project Tiny as it's also called. But during my time in Unite Australia, in the keynote, we got to see a part of Unity Tiny and what it actually is. So it's a lot more clear in my head now. Basically, it will make sure our games run faster and launch faster from all accessible mobile devices. It makes the project size smaller and as they say in this slide, is for creating highly optimal tiny download runtime and workflow. So December this year, we will have access to tiny mode uh, from the package manager and get to play with it. And since Unity is trying to promote ECS more and more, this will introduce a new runtime with highly modular design using ECS architecture. Something I quickly want to point out is that in 2019.1, Unity will also include correct versions of Android SDK and NDK installed with Unity. So if you're a mobile developer or uh, making mobile games basically and target Android devices, this could potentially be huge for you. And in 19.1, they're also introducing HDRP support for VR platforms, which is really nice because that will enable a bunch of new settings and features to be added to VR games. And during 19.2, they will also add multi-platform XR system input system, stereo compositor layers for VR, and single pass rendering for DX12. And now, one another super exciting feature, connected games. We have been talking a lot about connected games on this channel, so connected games, it's basically the name of a new mission for Unity when it comes to multiplayer, and that mission is to create a scalable, real-time multiplayer solution. And we have already seen some hints of connected games being used in the FPS sample project, and now we have early access to it, which is available in alpha. And the link to that in the, is in the description below, by the way, so make sure to check it out. So now, we're also gonna get a little bit more technical, and we'll start by taking a look at some programmer-oriented features that will be introduced in 2019, and then move on to non-programmers, -program especially designers. So this will be short though, so bear with me. First and foremost, 2019.1 all the way to point three will be the start of driving ECS Foundation towards release. And we'll have API simplicity and ease of use introduced, since a lot of people don't really understand ECS right now and by the way, I'm one of them. And we'll also see the release of the Mega City sample during 2019, which was shown at Unite LA as well. And by the way, doesn't that look sick? I mean, let me know in the comments what you think, but I was really impressed with that. For programmers, in 19.2, we'll get the Burst compiler released, and the initial release will include a foundation for building deterministic behavior and support for all platforms. Before that though, in 19.1, we'll have a UI elements that support editor windows and inspectors, CSS and full Flexbox spec implementation for complex and flexible layouts, powerful UI debugger, and a new performant UI renderer, so a bunch of UI related stuff. Then back to 2019.2, we'll get better CSS support, support for runtime preview, visual UI editor preview, and then interoperability, oh my god, what a word, <laughs> with common design tools. I wonder what these tools are as in terms of a list, like I would appreciate to actually hear more about that. The input system is also finally being updated, so we're gonna have action maps in 2019.1, and some combos, processors, action bindings, and more. This will be provided as a package, but it will be open source and extensible for whatever you need. And moving on to animators, Unity says they will try and bring you new tools for authoring. And man oh man, do they actually hold their promises. So in 19.1, they're introducing runtime rigging, 
Yes, you heard correct, which is straight up insane. We have seen runtime rigging in 2D already, and now they're introducing it for 3D games. And Timeline is also getting an update in 19.1, as we will have events and markers added, as well as some audio improvements. And furthermore, they're also introducing a track modifier framework with workflow to modify animation, AV in non-destructive way in Timeline, and they will also enable Timeline customization through specific clip playables and UI. They're also enabling live streaming and live video streaming for apps made with Unity in 2019.2. So if you're making a game for influencers, I would believe this is really good for you. And now moving on to designer style, which is where one of the most important features get revealed. So <laughs> they say that they wish to bring your artistic vision to life in Unity and they actually do. So right on topic, without wasting your time, we're finally getting a visual scripting tool in Unity. You heard it right, we are getting visual scripting in Unity, so coding will no longer be the only option available for creating the backend of your game. In 19.2, they're going to have it released in preview, and then 19.3, so later on in the year, will have a clear, compact UI with Blackboard and Stacks, just like in Shadograph. And we'll also have extensible high-level nodes and easy to create and share custom packages of nodes. It will generate performance C-sharp at runtime, making it easy for programmers to debug and optimize. There will be smart context-sensitive search, notes, and color grouping, which are all super necessary for these kinds of tools because it can tend to get a little bit too big if you're making like a complex code and you obviously want to categorize it a little bit more and just like design it for your feelings. It will also include visual tracing to help iteration and problem solving. And finally, it will include live editing. This is absolutely massive and probably one of the biggest releases, in my opinion, that Unity is going to ever do. So let me know what you think about this in the comments because I am super pumped and excited to try it out as soon as it's out there. But let me know your thoughts in the comments. So jumping back a little bit, SRP is also leaving preview status, so we'll have it fully released soon in 19.1. And on top of that, the lightweight render pipeline is also leaving preview during the same time actually and we'll get a full suit of documentation for it. However, High Definition Render Pipeline, or HDRP, is also receiving a huge update with a bunch of new features added, but, however, it does not seem to exit preview yet, which is not a problem, and it might be because a lot of features are getting added to it. So, it will have support for VR, MSAA, HD post-processing, reflection system, hair shader, which is super important and very interesting for me, and so on. So, we're, we're getting a bunch of new features. Shader Graph is also leaving preview in 19.1, which is super exciting. We'll also have a new node API released on top of that during the same time. And the progressive light mapper, which was seen used in the FPS sample project released during Unite LA last week, is also getting a couple of updates, including the ability to set max number of light maps. 19.1 will also introduce some improvements made to depth of field, motion blur, and auto exposure post processing for HDRP. And now another super exciting release has been the visual effects graph that was released late 2018.3 for like a week ago or something. And in 19.1, we're getting support for ribbon tails added. And I'm actually going to make a tutorial on these features as soon as possible. So let me know in the comments what particle effect we should create for that tutorial. And jumping back a little bit in the timeline, in 2018.3, we also saw improvements to the terrain system where they updated a bunch of stuff. And there's actually a tutorial on that on my channel if you watch it, wish to watch it. Not saying you should, but <laughs> just a little bit of shameless promotion. But in 19.1, they will continue the updates by adding terrain holes which is something that people have been suggesting for a long time and core terrain improvements and I'm just confident like I can't speak for their name but I'm just confident that they're gonna keep pushing out new updates to the terrain system because we now have a dedicated terrain uh, team at Unity which is really exciting so Besides that though, during that time in 2019.1, they will also introduce 2D lights and shadows, 2D shape-based lights, point lights, and spotlights. Followed up by 19.2, we'll get introduced to FPS and POV camera, 
virtual production environment, and finally, customizable blends and more. So yeah, that is all I wanted to cover for this video. Hope you all enjoyed watching. And they got, they, it seems like they got a bunch of new features that are going to be cooked under 2019 uh, for us to try out and actually use in our games as well. And I'm really excited for them. And I'm also very excited to cover them on this channel. So if you're new around here, basically what I do is I make some videos on Unity. I make videos on Unity features, Unity news, game development news, all that kind of stuff. So if you're interested in game dev and Unity as a whole, as a whole package basically, make sure to subscribe to the channel because we're gonna have a bunch of beginner's guide videos to Unity's latest features in 2019 and it's gonna be a lot of fun. And I'm also starting a series of videos where we're gonna be taking a look at some game designs, level design kind of stuff, and I'm gonna continue making speed level designs. So for those of you who are a little bit more like old school-ish fans, I guess you could say. Uh, don't worry, we, we're gonna have some more level designs coming up. But yeah, so if you like this video, make sure to give this video a thumbs up because it shows a lot of support. And also once again, subscribe down below to stay up to tune for new content coming up, especially in 2019, super exciting. And also join our Discord server, which, we, which is going to be linked in the description below uh, because we have a bunch of game development news shared there and we have a bunch of people that are like-minded. So it's a community of like 8,500 people, something-ish like that. Uh, that are like-minded and like the same stuff like you do as you do basically so make sure to join and communicate with people but yeah with that being said i'm looking forward to see you guys in the comment section of this video because i'm going to be super active there and also in our discord server so thank you for watching and until next time peace out i would also like to give a huge shout out to makeagame.com Richard Stans, Cupola, and everyone else who supports us on Patreon, you guys are awesome.